bless you, each and every one of you. It's really, truly a privilege um, to speak what God gives me. Um, and it really didn't seem like a Christmas story. <laughs> but we'll get there. <laughs> um, first, before I start, I'd just like to thank this, this church. Is, is, you know, you're not a big church. No, we're not. Physically. You are a big church in the spirit. And giving the most important thing, love. I once said I saw this church hatching. I don't know if you remember that, but I saw this church hatching. Have you seen? A few people already have brought out books. We've had um, people finish studies. That's that's awesome. That has a purpose. It has a purpose. And when I was preparing this, I saw Grand Central Station. You may think, but are we going to grow in number? No, you may grow. But the numbers, haven't you seen how many missionaries you guys encourage, pray for? Um, support, yes. yes. This yes. little church does all of that. Yes. And to those that are online, if you're from this church, you know what I'm talking about. But those who are not congregating, I'd really like to tell you, there's nothing like being in the house. Yes. I thank God for the opportunity that we have that, um, that we can see and experience and listen to the word online. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like That's being in the house. Yeah. Nothing yeah. like Amen. being next to your brothers and sisters. Amen. And just like all families, we have our ups and we have our downs. Yeah. That's what a family is, mm -hmm. but we're there. And that's the most important part. Amen. Amen. Um, as we come to the close of the year, we think about next year and how we're gonna, how we're going to um, plan everything, right? Sometimes we will start, of course, with praying, right? We plan on what we're gonna do. Amen. Have you had those thoughts already? Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you already seen the planners at Ross and all, the places? <laughs> all those really, really nice planners and stuff and all the, all the I'm not gonna use all this, this is just visual. <laughs> all the nice planners and journals that we're going to use. I have a prayer book that looks just like this. This is for next year. Prayer book that looks just like that. I have a map for the Bible to read the Bible in the whole year, and it gives me opportunities to pray over the Word. And I have another one for prayer. I have different tools. We need the tools. We have our phones that tell us everything, doesn't it? Isn't it scary to lose your phone? <laughs> you have all your appointments in there. Yeah. Your bank. <laughs> it's kind of scary to use, lose that, right? Yeah. Not have that. Um, I really miss sometimes writing everything down also. Yeah. But we prepare. We prepare because we don't want to be unprepared. We want to know what, where we have to go, when we have to go. And we put alarms on our alarms. Yeah. Do you do that? I do that. OCD, <laughs> alarms on your alarms. <laughs> and then you have a few snoozes just in case. <laughs> My son in law is laughing because when I stay with them, it's alarm after alarm <laughs> starting at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> but we do that because we need to prepare. But do we prepare spiritually too? We prepare for this life, but do we prepare spiritually? Yeah. Are we asking God where we're going, what we're gonna do? Amen. He has told me a few things about what the future seems like with me. He started with skates. That's right. God has and showed me the skates before she even knew about it. What that means, I have no idea. He's in charge. He's just giving me a right. He's just letting me know and we spiritually have to prepare yes 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 because why because yeah. then we'll be unprepared that's right yeah. if we don't prepare to have our relationship with god yeah. 
If we don't prepare what we're going to pray about, if we don't prepare right. how we're going to get into the spirit, All right. not preparing for like for Christmas, this looks awesome, by the way. This looks awesome. Yeah. Um, the, the team that did this was awesome. The team from yesterday, the, the activity. Um, that's why you guys are such a cozy church. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely, cozy church. But we have to prepare spiritually. We have to prepare for things that are going to be, we, because we can become overconfident. Oh, I'll remember that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. We'll become overconfident. That's so true. Yeah. Somebody ask for prayer. Got to get something and write it down because yeah. you will become overconfident, thinking yeah. that your memory is going to remember that that person, and then when that person had an, a situation, oh my gosh, I didn't pray. What happened? You didn't write it down. Because we're humans. We forget things. And if you don't have to write anything down, well, God bless you. I have to write everything down, and I have all my alarms to my alarms and things like that. Now I take my glasses off. Now I won't be able to see because I need to read. <laughs> we can become overconfident. We can become spiritually lazy because we're confiding that we're going to remember everything. Can we believe that we can become overconfident? Can we believe that because of our relationship with God and the miracles that we have seen in our lives and in the lives of people around us, it will always be that way without any efforts on our part to do that continuous search and cry out to the Lord? We can become lazy spiritually. Yeah. Each and every one of us, there is nobody that is exempt from that. If we do not prepare, if we do not write it down, we will. Haven't you knelt down to pray or sat down to pray, however you pray, pacing back and forth, however you pray? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haven't you forgotten things, maybe? Yeah. Haven't, hasn't your mind wandered off into, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Oh, that reminds me of this, that reminds me of that. We do that. Mm -hmm. That's why I have a prayer book, point by point. And yes, I have my conversation with God. It's not just reading off things that I have to say. I have my conversation with God. But what's it, when it's a personal conversation, nobody, you don't need to remember anything. Right. But when you're praying for someone else, you do. Yes. 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 When you're praying for someone else, you do. Hallelujah. Yes. It's so dangerous to consider oneself so powerful that we won't forget anything, that we won't um, Remember that we cried out when we were in that situation, we still have to cry out. Because we may be in that situation before. Didn't Jesus tell the disciples, pray so that you won't enter into temptation? They had to get up, start pacing, not sit down because they were sleepy. And they did go into temptation. They did go into temptation. We can't believe that we're so powerful that we're, we are only vessels of clay. The glory always belongs to God, but what you do in your flesh and not by the Spirit does not glorify God. So let's start with this man. By the way, I'm going to start off by saying that he was called a king that did good in the eyes of the Lord. But the example I'm going to share with you does not reflect that because it's at the end of his life, King Asa. So let's start with Second Chronicles 14, 9 to 12. And it says this. God, I'm here in your presence. This is your word. Take control of me, my mouth, my mind, my heart. And may your spirit be among us, giving us and nudging us in those areas that we need, starting with me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Zerah the Cushite marched out against them with an army of thousands upon thousands and three hundred chariots and came as far as Marisha, as Asa, went up to meet him, and they took up battle positions in the valley of Zephatha, near Marisha. Then Asa 
called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are our God. Do not mere mortals prevail. Do not let do not let mere mortals prevail against you. King Asa started strong, doing what pleased God. He recognized God. He called out to God when he knew he was powerless. There was nothing he could do. Are there moments like that in your life that you feel powerless? There's nothing you can do? Yeah, yes, there are. Absolutely. Yes. yes, there are. You've had them in the past. You may be going through one right now. Mm -hmm. And you will have difficult moments in the future. Yeah. We always have to cry out to God. Yeah. We yeah. always yeah. have to be ready yeah. to say, God, that, um, I will say who, but a family member would sometimes would go with me shopping and I would say, I wonder if God would, would like this. Or I wonder if God would like that. And she would look at me, I'll say it, my sister. <laughs> Put you out there. You don't want to come today, so. So, and she would say, you tell, you ask God about, God doesn't, he's got too much to do. You think he's worried about your clothes? I say, yeah, he is. He is. He worries about everything. He worries about everything. I don't worry about anything. I don't worry about things he's already not. I Let me rephrase that. He doesn't worry about things. What I'm saying is that he yeah. occupies himself in our, in the care of us. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Sometimes we don't, but he does. Yeah. Sometimes we have to do something and we're okay. We're over here chilling. And God sees the dangers up ahead. Yes, he does. We think we're powerful. We think we're worthy because we've been with him. We've seen what he's done in our lives. So we just sit back. I've done it. You can't do that. Because the enemy is always watching. King Asa even went after his mom's idolatry at that time. At that beginning. Her very expensive, expensive altars and Asherah poles, those were expensive at, the, at that time. That idolatry and all those idols and all those things that they would construct to worship their gods. And the result of that was a time of peace for Judah. It's a really awesome story. Go through all the history, read everything. We don't have time to do all that now. Asa was a king for 40, 41 years. Yes. He was among the kings, like I said, that the word says he did good in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. Azariah, son of Oded, told King Asa, which is in 2 Chronicles 15, 1 to 2, the Spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me. Asa and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you when you are with wow. him. Wow. If you seek him, wow. he will be found by you. Wow. But if you forsake wow. him, wow. he will forsake you. Wow. We can't take it for granted. We can't take for granted the relationship that we once had with God. You can't take for granted the miracles that you're living today or the relationship that you have today. You have to prepare for tomorrow. You have to prepare for tomorrow. Good work. When you hear good things, you take courage. You feel confident. When Asa heard that, he felt confident. He felt like, let's do it. But then as time passes by, you get used to seeing all the things, all the great things, and you get used to seeing the power of God in people that you're praying for and in, in your own life. And then little by little, you start getting overconfident. You begin to... you. 
who once, when you did things passionately, because you knew God would respond to that, mm -hmm. you begin to feel that your decisions are correct because the ones that were correct, they're still correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not always. Yeah. Not always. God is with me. He is. Yeah. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have sent the warning to him. He had no hope against a large army. He cried out to God, and God supernaturally gave him victory. Yeah. Is there anything impossible for God? No. There is nothing impossible for God. No matter how impossible it may seem, it is not impossible for God. Amen. He is the same God who parted the Red Sea. Right. He is the same God who called out to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. Yeah. He is that same God. He is the same God who said, Talita Kumi, rise. He is the same God. But Esa made a mistake. He forgot the warning. If you forsake God, he will forsake you. After 35 years of being, listening to God, doing what was right, started to forget that he had to cry out all the time. Sometime later, he made a treaty. And if you read that story, you will not see that he consulted God. He thought that he didn't ask God. He put his into action his own negotiation skills, trusting man instead of asking God about it. Because sometimes important people will be in your life and they'll tell you, you should do this or you should do that. You should, why don't you do this? And since you probably look up to them, you probably do it just because, well, they're a man or a woman of God. Let me follow what this person is telling me. Did you pray about it? Still have to pray about it. You still have to pray about it. You still have to ask God, is that word for me? Yeah. Not just because someone tells you something, you're just going to go ahead and do whatever that person tells you, you've got to pray about it. You don't belong to that person. You belong to God. Your outcome belongs to him. The victory is in his hands, not in anyone else's, not even in your hands. You've got to pray out. You've got to pray to him. You've got to cry out to him. Sometime later, he made that treaty. He was looking for a non-conflict relationship with other kingdoms. But he didn't cry out to God. He thought he knew what to do. He created his own solution. Was God there? You want to do it on your own? He will let you. He will let you. He will let you. So maybe some parents here remember that with their kids. You told them once twice, three times, don't do this, don't touch that, you'll get burned, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And then you just stay and watch. <laughs> and then the child will come screaming. Of course you're watching, you don't want the child to get hurt, but you stay and watch. And then something happened, they fall or they touch something that was, ouch, right? Because the little finger, my, my daughter, my youngest daughter was like that. I would say no. And she would go looking at me and touching. <laughs> looking at me and touching. Sorry, Leslie. <laughs> I said my youngest daughter. <laughs> and what didn't I tell you? Not to touch it. Didn't I tell you not to touch it? Sometimes God will, he'll let you. You want to do it on your own? You think you're powerful? You think you're, wait. And it's not easy. Wait. I myself am asking God, God, I feel like I'm not doing anything. What do you want me to do? Guide me. I'm kind of, I get, it's not that I'm not doing anything where, wherever I'm congregating. I am. But want to do more. <laughs> but maybe God needs to sh 
teach you something. <clears throat> Maybe God needs to let you go through certain experiences so that you could be equipped for the next step. Let's go to Isaiah 31 to 3. Isaiah 31 to 3 says, Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not of my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, who look for help to Pharaoh's protection, to Egypt's shade, But, uh, but Pharaoh's protection will be to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. That is talking about consulting other people instead of consulting God. We have to consult God for every everything, everything. Should I buy that house, God? Should I not buy that house? You, it's, and it's not you're going you're gonna to sit down and you're asking for a job. You're not going to go out and look for a job. I'm not saying that. I am not saying that. You need a job, you need to look for a job. But you need to pray about it. You keep sending those applications out, that your resume is taking or whatever you need to do, but you need to pray about it. Because maybe you'll get a job that is not the job that you need to be in. And who's going to show you for asking him? He will. He will. Briefly, it just came to my mind. It's not part of my, my um, notes. Uh, when I went in, I was a missionary pastor for La Iglesia Bautista de Tel in uh, Canovanas, Puerto Rico for seven years. And uh, I remember that when I lost my job of 17 years, that's when everything started unfolding and the pastor at that time wanted me to get into the ministry. So. Um, of course, I had to be called by God. And um, I remember I was in a mission in, um, I don't remember where that mission was. Uh, it was. Do you remember the first mission? The town? <coughs> Seba. Seba. I was in Seba. It was I was going to do a, a summer thing for the students of a, um, a, a facility, a housing facility, a government housing facility. So there was going to be about 40 kids there, 40, 50 kids there. And I started that. It was for the whole summer. I started in May, got prepared. Um, they rented a place. I, I was sleeping there and everything. I was always there. And, <laughs> and, um, one day, a friend of ours, which was from our main church, called me and said, I've got a job for you. It was at a pharmaceutical. You're going to be a plant buyer there. And um, I already talked to Human Resources. The job is yours. I really wanted to work at a pharmaceutical. I wanted to continue um, in planning and buying, which was my main thing. And uh, I prayed about it. I went into the little altar area and um, I knelt down and I prayed and I started to cry and cry and cry. Mm -hmm. And I cried harder and I cried harder. <laughs> I cried harder. <laughs> Why was I crying so hard? Because it, God had already told me. No. <laughs> this is what I called you to do. That's when I knew God called me. My pastor had prayed for me and everything, but that's when I knew. Because that is what I wanted to do. And I would have grown economically. I would have grown in studies. That's not what God wanted for me. Yeah. So you send your resumes, your applications, you need, still need to pray. Yeah. You don't know what God wants with you. Yeah. Don't think that just because you, you have a certain experience in this or that, that's what God wants you to do. Not necessarily. You need to pray about it. Yeah. Good work. Yeah. You need to pray about it. Yeah. Have you created your own solutions? How did that work out for you? 
<laughs> Didn't work out too good for me. Your prayer life is not for a time. It's every day for every situation. Seeking God's counsel is continuous. It is not temporary. Your relationship with God has to be continuous and in a constant growth. Asa became comfortable. He became lazy. After 34 years, he became lazy. If we become lazy, we go wayward. Well, like you're at the beach. Haven't you been at the beach? You have all your stuff here, your towel, your, your chair. You go into the water. You're really happy in the water. And you get up out of the water. You're going to go back to your chair. Somebody stole my stuff. <laughs> Somebody stole my stuff. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. I guess that only happens to New Yorkers. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> you drift away and end up far, all, far from the shore, away from your things, your towel, your chair. You wander when you're not paying attention. And we wander spiritually because sometimes we're just not paying attention because we think we've got this. We don't. We don't. It's continuous every single day. So... In Second Chronicles, oh my gosh, I took all of them out. Second Chronicles 16, 7 to 9, it says this. And someone else came to him, not the same person. God used someone else. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, because you relied on the king wow. of Aram wow. and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Wow. Were not the Cushites and the Libyans a mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Amen. You have done a foolish thing. And from now on, yeah. you will be at war. Wow. That, was, that must have been terrible. Wow. Do you know what it is to serve the Lord your whole life? 35 years? And at the last six years, you become obstinate? And Think you're too powerful to kneel down before the Lord because you're the king? Wow. Wow. You can be the king or queen of your own That's right. life. That's right. That's right. You're still not bigger than God. And he has the authority over everything. He has the authority over everything. Did he repent? Nope. He was a king, a powerful king. He was not going to allow this prophet to talk down to him. What did you say? Did you just call me a fool? Not very many times God calls people a fool in the Bible, but he does. He does, even powerful kings. So in verse 10 says, Asa was angry with the seer because of this. He was so enraged that he put him in prison. In prison. Wow. At that time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. Wow. He was so mad. Wow. He brutally oppressed them. Did that God? Did that stop God's message? No, it didn't. Even at the end of his life, he refused to humble himself and seek God. He sought man instead of God, becoming unteachable, prideful, angry, and bitter. How can we go through these things? How can those things happen to us? Well, we stop seeking God. We stop seeking God's face continuously. Philippians 4, 6 through 10. What does that tell us? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petitions, with thanksgiving, 
Present your request to God. What we don't acknowledge our depravity is a second. He thought he was too big. He didn't acknowledge his depravity, that he had fallen, that he had gotten lazy, spiritually lazy. Yeah. We are, when we do that, we are calling Jesus a liar, that we don't need a savior, that he left his throne in vain to become flesh. When we disregard God, when we need to make decisions, when we stop praying to him continuously, that is what we are calling him a liar, that we don't need him. That we're powerful enough. Mm -hmm. That we've grown enough. That we know enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't matter who you are, how big, how high you are, powerfully, how much money you are you have. It means nothing in God's eyes. Maybe here with your peers it does, but with God it means nothing. Nothing. You will one day have to face God. Yeah. No matter who you are, no matter how much you have. So 1 John says this. 1 John 1, 8 to 10. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So when you say you don't need him, that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. We need him in all circumstances. When we forget that our peace is only through Jesus Christ, it's not within your bank account, it's with Jesus Christ. So, in Ephesians 2, 4 to 18, what does it say here? But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. It is by grace that you have been saved. 14 to 18 says this. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth... No, that's not... Sorry. Ephesians 2.14. 2.14. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. Our peace is only through him. <clears throat> And in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. We need him. We need him. Wouldn't it have been easier for Asa to humble himself and pray about the things? Everything, just like he did at the beginning, there's nothing impossible for God. Nothing. Too small, too great for God. God's not through with you. That's what Philippians 1, 6 says. God is not through with you. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We have to continue. We can't get spiritually lazy. We're going to prepare for this end of the year, but we need to prepare for next year. We need to pray for everything, what we're going to do today, what we're going to do tomorrow. We need to pray. We can't confide that since I've made good decisions in the past, I'm going to continue to make good decisions. You can't confide in that because you know what? The devil is watching. And he is crazy about Letting a banana peel in your walk, in your path. 
there's nothing that he would like to see more than you flat on your face. That is why God continues to let us know. Pray. So that you don't enter into temptation. <coughs> temptation of thinking that you're too great to listen when God is talking to you and to follow what he says no matter who is telling you. <coughs> I'm sorry. God, God will use... Thank you. Sorry. God will use anyone in any... God will use anyone he wants to speak to you. Don't disregard the message. Just pray. 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 Ask God to confirm what was told to you. My friends, we need that baby to be born. It's a beautiful season. We get really joyous with all the songs and everything. I was really happy yesterday looking at everybody doing things. I was just looking around. I was really happy. There was a lot of food, like Pastor Angela said. <laughs> We need that baby to be born. Look around. Christmas is a reminder that we need him. He came because we need him. Amen. We need that baby to grow, to nail our sins, my sins to the cross. We need him every day. Amen. Yield. Yield. Yield to him, my friend. Yield all to him. We will face God one day, either for eternal separation from him or eternal life with him. And... I just wanted two weeks ago, after um, I think it was after Pastor David preached, he asked Pastor Angela to, to pray. She said she felt a turning point. I had to go back to, the, to, to that because it stayed in my mind, but I wanted to say word for word. She prayed that there would be a new sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, that our spiritual eyes and ears would be open. Did you remember that word? When I talked about not getting comfortable, yes. that there would be an awakening coming in the spirit. Yes. Last week, God called us to position ourselves to see. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I don't know. I hear God talking. Yes. 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 Not just for Catalyst, yes. for the church. Yes. God is talking. God is talking to the church. If he said those things here at Catalyst, he has been saying them in different churches. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Call out to me. So pray so you do not enter into temptation. You need me. I've given you all the, all the tools that you need, yes. And I've let you learn a lot, yes. You still need me. Because you know what? And maybe some people won't like me saying this. You are no challenge to the enemy. You cannot challenge the enemy. I know a lot of people will say, Satan this, Satan that. And if you did that in the spirit, he leaves. But you will be victorious against the enemy in the spirit and crying out to God constantly. Amen. Making this word, your knees, part of your life every day so that you do not go into temptation. Because he will always let you know. He will always let you know when there is danger lurking. I heard it. Tell yourself, God is talking to me. I don't hear it. God is talking to me. God is talking to me. Wake up. Say your name. Let us not be spiritually lazy. There's a lot happening out there. A lot to be done. Don't get comfy. Yeah. I said it was a comfy church, but I didn't mean it in that sense. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't get comfortable with your 
position at, at your moment. There's a lot to pray for. There are opportunities waiting to be seized. Grand Central Station. Have, haven't you seen how many pastors, missionaries have been coming through this church? You think that was a coincidence? No, it's not. God is preparing. He's ready to come and he's preparing. God is preparing because this is the last. This is the last. How many years that will be? I don't know. But he's preparing people because there are still people that are not saved. There are still people that need reminders. Wake up. Wake up. We can't be comfy. No. Spiritually. We cannot. I'm going to ask Pastor to guide us into prayer. Job well done. Amen. Give her some encouragement right now. To, give her some encouragement. to God be the glory. Let's stand together. Please bow your heads with me for a moment. I have no doubt in my heart that this dear woman, this precious uh, minister of the gospel, was sent to give this message to this church. Please listen carefully, because this is the time where we tend to start thinking about lunch and what I have to do and Am I going to go shopping this afternoon? <laughs> please, please give me five minutes yeah. of your attention. Because there's some things that need to be highlighted about what was said. Yeah. Number one, a while back, about a month and a half ago, Brother, Lund Brother Lundry sent me a text that he had concerns about some things spiritually in our culture today. And I agreed, I sent him a text back, and here's the gist. Are there any idols in your life? You might say, whoa, pastor, I'm a Christian. But I'm talking about little things that sneak in, like reading horoscopes. Going to fortune tellers is not okay. It's an abomination in the eyes of God palm readers, mm -hmm. advisors, spirit, so-called spiritual advisors. You got the Bible. You don't need a spiritual advisor. If you have anything in your house, a fetish, something from another country that was a good luck charm, you're wearing a piece of jewelry that's a good luck charm, get rid of it. I'm just going to tell you straight out. Any connection to the past, yeah. any connection, even resentments, anger, and bitterness, or hatred towards somebody, that can become demonic. Yeah. Yes. That can actually be witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of all those things. Yeah. Cleanse your home. Cleanse your heart. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And here's the last thing. This was an inconvenient truth that was preached today. Now, what do I mean by that? It made me squirm a little bit. Yeah. And Brother Joe, you hit it right on the head. We need it, though. Yeah. Right now, I'm, I'm taking some medication. Some of you know that I'm in a medical situation right now. I have to submit myself to certain things that are very uncomfortable, yeah. taking certain medications. Is it pleasant? No. But is it good for my health? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So right now, decide in your life who you will serve. Do you want the comfortableness of this world or do you want the kingdom of heaven? When Jesus blows the trumpet, do you want to say, listen, I know where I belong. If you're too comfortable in this world, you will not be comfortable in the next world. The Bible says, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. 
Be ye holy as I am holy, says the Lord. Holiness is not what clothes you wear. It's not whether or not you wear makeup, okay? Then years ago, we said, oh, she's holy. She doesn't wear my makeup. And meanwhile, after church, she's gossiping and talking about everybody. In the... It's not about that. It's about a heart that is 100% dedicated to God. Dedicated to God. You have an additional word? Yes. Um, this was really of God this morning. God is making us uncomfortable because he wants to change us into his likeness. He wants to preserve us. But as Pastor was saying, we both felt we looked at each other during the service. If you have any Asherah poles in your lives, those were idols. Those were things that they they looked to in the past instead before they, of instead of God. But I just want to say for us Christians, Asa saved, served God for 35 years. We may have served God 50 years or whatever it is, but if God is calling us to change right now and saying, no, I want you to depend on me. I don't want you to take for granted that I've been with you for 50 years. So I'm not talking about people now, Pastor talked about it, that have idols. But what I'm talking about is when God's by his spirit is moving on us and moving on the church to change, get ready. Get ready, because we're not going to be take for granted that God has been with us. We want to go with him. We want to move with him. And we don't want to take for granted that his spirit's been with us. Amen. 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 Let's not get lazy, church. No, no, no. And no, no. before you get mad at me, I'm preaching to myself as well. It starts right. with us. It does. Yes. Leadership has to be from the top yes. down. Yes. We yes. have to practice what we preach. Yes. 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 All of us. All of yes. us. Yes. But aren't yes. you glad that God yes. is patient yes. with yes. us? Yes. Yes. God is not yes. one-sided, yes. disciplinarian, authoritative, yes. and harsh. Yes. He's lo our yes. loving Father who would die for who has died. He yes. sent his son to die yes. for us. Yes. And yes. loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Obey him. Yes, yes. Obey him. I sleep books. Let's sing this little chorus. I see books, honey. If people have any books. Okay, okay. Yes. Any books that are offensive in some way. Maybe a book about foreign gods or witchcraft or good luck or anything. Anything of that nature. You look through your house. Yeah, get rid of it. And with the Holy Spirit upon you, as you're praying, yes. as you're praying, walking around your house, and yes. ask God to open your eyes yes. Yes. to anything yes. that's offensive yes. to Him. Yes, Lord. Yes. And cut it out. Yes. Get rid of it before it destroys. Yes. It destroys your home. Yes, yes, in Jesus' in Jesus name. Somebody yes. say, Pastor, I receive that. Yes, Lord. I receive. I receive the word today. Yes, I receive. An uncomfortable word, but it's for our good. Yes, it was. It was good. I receive it as well. Amen. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll say yes, Lord. I'll again for a second if before we close if there's somebody here without looking around or even at home watching on Facebook and you need to rededicate or recommit your life to Christ maybe you've been brought up in the Christian faith but you've never really given 100% of your life to God maybe you've just gotten a little cold you're not a bad person you're not going out no. killing people robbing banks or anything like that but you know in your heart there's 
not 100% of your life dedicated to Christ. I'm going to ask you to lift a hand and pray with me right now. If you just lift a hand wherever you are, God bless you. 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 Just say this prayer. It's whisper it. Um, whisper it to God this morning. Lord Jesus, I realize I need you desperately. I recognize, Lord, that I'm lost without you. I do not want to be self-sufficient. I need you to be in my life. I recognize you as my Savior and Lord. Please come and take away my sins. I acknowledge that it was your sacrifice, your blood, shed on the cross and your resurrection that saves me, not myself. Help me to put my faith and trust in you. Read my Bible and grow in fellowship with other Christians from this day on. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Amen. And amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Let's sing this one more time. I'll say yes, Lord. Sing it from your heart. I'll say yes. Sing it and really mean it. Ah, to your go with us. We pray for our Bible study on Wednesday night, our prayer, phone prayer on Tuesday. Thank you that we're walking in full obedience to God. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. Amen. Turn around, give a fist bump. Give a fist bump that we're allowed to fist bump now. All right.